Okay, today we're going to be looking at the uh, start of a new chapter on equations of circles. Um, we're using a version of the one that you would have seen at GCSE, uh, but it's going to be where the center is no longer the origin. So instead of having x squared plus y squared equals r squared, our general form will be x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equals r squared, where the center of the circle is ab. So it's a bit like your transformations where, because it's in the brackets, if we've moved 2 along, then we've got x minus 2 in the brackets. And similarly, if we've moved 3 up, it's slightly different than when it's y as a function of x because the, the b is also in the bracket, um, then the change is exactly the same as it would be for when we're changing x because it's in the brackets, it's the opposite of what you think. So for example, center 3, 8, radius equals 7, uh, my equation in this case will be x minus 3 all squared plus y minus 8 all squared equals 7 squared, 49. Uh, for b, minus 2, 0, we're given the diameter as 12, so we need to be aware that we need to halve it to get the radius of 6. So that becomes the opposite, which so is x plus 2 all squared, because of the 0, I just write plus y squared equals 6 squared, 36. In this case, we're given what the centre is, 4 minus 1, so I can give you part of the answer, x minus 4 squared plus y plus 1 all squared. But they don't give me the radius, they give me what it goes through. So if we do a little sketch then, uh, 4 minus 1 is down here, and 6, 3 is 6 along and 3 up is up there. So what have I done then? I've gone from 4 to 6, so along 2, minus 1 to 3, up 4. So r squared will equal 4 squared or 2 squared which is 20, r is root 20, or whatever it is, root 4 times root 5, 2 root 5, but we need it as r squared in the formula anyway, so I've got x minus 4 all squared plus y plus 1 all squared equals root 20 squared, which is 20. Uh, 1d gives me a picture, gives me a circle, touching the y-axis um, at the point 6, uh, the centre is in line with the minus 5 in the x-axis, so I can read the centre off as being minus 5, 6. So part of my equation here is x plus 5 all squared plus y minus 6 all squared, but then the radius, because it's touching there, that's my radius. My radius is 5 units long, so I can do it and say it's equal 25. Um, E, we're actually given just the two endpoints of the, of the diameter, minus 4, 3, and 6, minus 11. So my centre is halfway in between. So it's the average of minus 4 and 6. So 6 minus 4 is 2, divided by 2, 1. And 3 plus 11 is 14, divided by 2 is 7. And if I do another quick sketch as well, the point 1, 7 is there, and the point 6, 11 is all the way up here. So I've gone from 1 to 6 there, which is 5 along, and from 7 to 11, which is 4 up. So my Pythagoras, R, is going to be root 5 squared, add 4 squared, which is root 41. So my equation is x minus 1 R squared plus y minus 7 R squared equals R squared, which is 41. Uh, I can check it by putting in the points A and B, should, both points should satisfy it. Um, so I'm going to get uh, minus 4 minus 1 is 5 squared, and then 3 minus 7 is 4 squared, uh, which is fine, and 6 and 11 gives me 5 squared and 4 squared as well, so it's 41. <coughs> um, so, question 2 is, here's the equation of a circle, here's a point, and we're asked, is it on the circle, inside the circle, or outside the circle. All I have to do is stick in the x and y values into the left-hand side of it. If the answer is equal to 6, then that point is on the circle. If it's less than 6, it's this point is inside it, and if it's bigger than 6, it's outside it. So we'll stick 3 and minus 5 in. 3 and minus 4 is going to be uh, minus 1 all squared, which is 1. And minus 5 plus 7 is 2 all squared, which is 4. 1 out of 4 is 5. Um, so in this case, it's going to be inside because 5 is less than 6. Okay, so it's just a matter of sticking in the values, I would actually write it. I didn't show I've got LHS equals 1 squared plus 2 squared which equals 5, which is less than 6, so it's inside. Um, 
when we're given the equation of a circle, we can read off, hopefully, the center and the radius. So in this case, when it's given in this form here, I can say that the center is the point minus 5, uh, 1, the negative of the thing with the brackets, and our, um, what do we call, root 72, and I need to do a little bit of um, third work, root 36 times root 2, 6 root 2, and then exact value. But they can also give us this form here. And what I have to do with this form is do a little bit of completing the square for each part of it. Um, I know I'm going to have the equation of a circle as long as I've got the same coefficient of x squared and y squared. Um, so in this case, I've got 1x squared, 1y squared, so it's going to be the equation of a circle. So x squared plus 8x, I need to halve the x coefficient to get plus 4. And that would have given me x squared plus 8x plus 16. I need to balance it by minus in the 16. Similarly for these two terms, I've got y halved the coefficient there to get minus 1 all squared. Uh, and notice in this case, I get, when I multiply that, I get y squared minus 2y plus 1. I need to balance it by doing minus 1 there. The fact that that's a plus and that's a minus, I'm still subtracting whatever this number in the bracket is squared. So the fact is plus 8x to give me plus 4, I've still got minus 16. The fact that's minus 2y to give me minus 1, I've still got minus 1. I'm still subtracting to complete the square. And I've got the minus 8 that was there in the original question. So all of a sudden I've got 16, 1 and 8 to move the other side to give me 25. So I can state that I need to rewrite it first to make it more obvious. x squared, x plus 4 all squared, plus y minus 1 all squared equals 25. So my centre is minus 4, 1 and r is root 25, which is 5. Same thing for this one. x squared minus 10x is x minus 5 all squared minus 25. Um, this becomes slightly more awkward because for the first one of these ones here, I've got an odd coefficient for the x or y. And that's been even, 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 and now an odd one. So when I halve it, I get plus 3 over 2. You need to begin, become quite confident with your fractions work. When I, when I square it, 3 over 2 all squared, that's why I keep it as top every fractions. So I can write it as 9 over 4. And then plus 15 equals 0. So I'm nearly there x minus 5 all squared, plus y plus 3 over 2 all squared. When I move stuff across, I've got 25 minus 15, which is 10, plus 9 over 4 is 40 plus 9 all over 4, 49 over 4, and I can square root that to get r equals 7 over 2. So my centre is the point negative of that and the negative of that, and r equals root 49 over 4, which is 7 over 2. Now, last one I've got here for these ones, I've got 4x squared and 4y squared. Before I do anything, I need to divide by 4 to get 1x squared so I can complete the square. They've been fairly nice to me because they've made these things, the x and the y coefficients, at least multiples of 4, and in particular multiples of 8, so that I'm still going to get nice numbers when I do me completing the square. That one though isn't, means I'm going to have a fraction somewhere in my working. Uh, but it's not going to be a massive part of it. So x squared minus 6x plus y squared minus 8y and then plus 19 over 4 equals 0. I've got x minus 3 all squared minus 9, that's squared, plus y minus 4 all squared minus 16 and plus 19 over 4 to sort out equals 0. So I can say my, my centre is the point 3, 4. My radius is whatever 16 plus 9 minus 19 over 4 is. Well, 16 plus 9 is 25. And 25 minus 19 over 4 is 100 minus 19 all over 4, 81 over 4. So R will equal the square root of 81 over 4, 9 over 2. So that's the only bit really where I've got to deal with fractions at the end. So my centre is the point 3, 4, the negative of those. Radius, get my constant for the other side, uh, press buttons, square root it, r equals 9 over 2. Last couple of examples from this one. <coughs> given an equation uh, and given a point, and the question asks for the maximum distance for any point on the circle to this point outside of there, and the minimum. Um, what these are has to do with the line that goes from that point there through the centre to there. So 
this point is actually the nearest one to the circle and this point opposite is the furthest one there. Any point in between those will have a distance when I join them to that point there which is somewhere between this and this. You can imagine sort of moving around, uh, adjoining to the edge and going round and round and round like a piston. And what would the piston do? It would be furthest away here and be shortest there like that. Um, so what I need uh, is the centre and the radius. The centre and the radius are actually going to be quite useful for me. Um, so I'm going to take my equation and do what I've done before. Uh, I can do x minus 7 all squared minus 49 and then plus the y squared and plus the 13 equals 0. Um, I can read off the centre as the point uh, 7 naught, which is handy because the total was on the x-axis anyway. I can move across the 49 and the 13. 49 minus 13 is 36, so r is root 36, which is 6. Now, what I need then is the distance from, uh, let's call it, um, there's P, and let's call C my centre. So PC will be from minus 1 to 7, which is 8 along, and from 0 up to 15, which is 59. Uh, and by Pythagoras, 8 squared plus 15 squared square root of the Pythagorean triple uh, equals 17. So the maximum distance will actually be PC plus the radius. So PC plus R is my maximum. So 17 plus 6, 23. And PC minus R to that point there, because that's where the radius is there, uh, is 17 minus 6, which is 11. So that point is the shortest distance. And you can do Pythagoras on work out the point is quite hard to do uh, we'll do that later on in the course where the line and the circle uh, intersects to get these two coordinates you don't actually need the coordinates it's just a distance one but we do need the line that goes from that point to the center and then extended and realize it to the center and back to get that one to the center and on to get the other one by plusing or minus in the radius uh, and last one um, is we've got a Equation of a circle, x squared minus 20x plus y squared minus 16y plus 1 to 8 equals 0. We want to draw the smallest circle which touches this big one and the y-axis. So I'll need to sort it out first, do a sketch of it, and then use that sketch to help me draw this little circle, um, and then go on and answer the question. So I've got uh, x minus 10 all squared plus y minus 8 all squared, oh no, I've got my so I'm getting rusty, minus 100, minus 64, and plus 1, 2, 8, equals 0. Um, so I can read off the centre as the point uh, 10, 8, so 10 along and 8 up. Uh, and I can read off eventually 164 moves across, minus 1, 2, 8, gives me 36, so r equals 6. So if that's the point, uh, 10 along and 8 there, and I've got a radius of 6, it means it's going to go to that point there, like, roughly like that. That's got a radius of 6. So what I'm interested in is this little circle here and its centre. Well, if that's the point 10 along and 8 up, it's got a radius of 6, the end point there, that one, well, with a point 4 along and 8 up, that'll be north along and 8 up, and its centre will be halfway between 2 along and 8 up. So I can say the equation is x minus 2 all squared plus y minus 8 all squared, and its radius from 0 to 2, or from 2 to 4, is 2, and so square 2 to get 4. So in that case there, um, I've used the diagram, used the fact to do my complete the square to get the equation, and from that I can sketch it, have an idea what my little circle looks like. Um, it's not the best drawing of a circle, I know, but it'll do for now.